Welcome to our worship service. Settle into your space. Take a deep breath in and out. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe we are all connected in this world, and we value the worth and dignity of each and every person. We pull on the wisdom of many sources to teach us, guide us, and help us understand the world. As we settle into our space and prepare our hearts for worship, let us remember our connections through our collective chalice lighting words. Please join me. In the light of truth and the warmth of love, we gather to seek and seek to share. Our opening words today are from The Inward Journey by Howard Thurman. There is a sense of wholeness at the core of humanity that must abound in all a person does, that marks with reverence a person's every step, that has its sway when all else fails, that wearies out all evil things, that warms the depth of frozen fears, making a friend of foe, making love of hate, and last beyond the living and the dead, beyond the goals of peace, the ends of war. This person seeks through all his or her years to be complete and of one peace within and without. Come, let us worship together. Please raise your voices and spirit in our opening hymn, We Are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. Oh, for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. Oh, for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreamings, and we are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We Mothers of courage, fathers of time, daughters of dust, and the sons of great visions, we're sisters of mercy, brothers of love, lovers of life, and the builders of nations, we're seekers of truth, keepers of faith, makers of peace, and the wisdom of ages, we are our grandmother's prayers we are our grandfather's dreamings and we are the breath of our ancestors we are the spirit 
spirit of God, we are mothers of courage, fathers of time, daughters of dust, and the sons of great visions, we're sisters of mercy, brothers of love, lovers of life, and the builders of nations, we're seekers of truth, and keepers of faith, we are makers of peace, and the wisdom of ages, we are our grandmother's prayers, we, we are our grandfather's dreamings, and we are the breath of our ancestors, we are the spirit of God, we are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreamings, we are the breath of our ancestors, we are the spirit of God. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. born the grandson of slaves, yet Howard Thurman would become one of the most celebrated religious figures of the 20th century, a spiritual mentor to Martin Luther King Jr. Whether we want it that way or not, we all tied together. And a moral anchor for the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King Jr. would quote Howard Thurman on many, many occasions. I think Howard Thurman, for many leaders, in that movement, King included, played the role of pastor. In the 1930s, after an historic meeting with Mahatma Gandhi, Thurman becomes one of the early voices for nonviolent resistance for a people who over centuries experienced unimaginable violence. He helped to establish the philosophical framework of how to struggle. He saw himself as a spiritual activist because he was fundamentally a teacher. He had this combination of, of being kind and being strong, and I think that's a very rare combination. While Sunday morning was often considered the most segregated hour in the week, Thurman helped pioneer a church where people of different races and religions could worship together. He's suspicious of denomination and dogma and creed. He would never identify himself as a theologian because he thought theologians boxed God. And he was called a mystic because he believed religious experience was best explored within. Howard Thurman was actually practicing contemplative spirituality before we actually started calling it contemplative spirituality. At his heart, he was a, a nature mystic. Thurman is talking to trees. Trees. <laughs> Yet this mystic was also an outspoken critic of Christianity for its part in the nation's deep racial divides. And he countered with a shocking new work that offered a revolutionary new way of understanding the life of Jesus Christ and how it speaks directly to the oppressed and disinherited. I carried the book with me, Jesus and the Disinherited, every day. And he gives an Africanity to the interpretation of Jesus. He provided a, a spiritual perspective that was empowering. There were people encountering Thurman's work and being shaken at their core. I would have to find out what was the word that the religion of Jesus had to say to the man with his back against the wall. You will find true success and happiness if you have only one goal. There really is only one, and that is this, to fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself. 
Theologian Howard Thurman said it best. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Good morning. Our first reading is The Inward Sea by Howard Thurman. There is in every person an inward sea, and in that sea there is an island, and on that island there is an altar, and standing guard before that altar is the angel with the flaming sword. Nothing can get by that angel to be placed upon that altar unless it has the mark of your inner authority. Nothing passes the angel with the flaming sword to be placed upon your altar unless it be a part of the fluid area of your consent. This is your crucial link with the eternal. Our second reading is The Growing Edge by Howard Thurman. All around us, worlds are dying, and new worlds are being born. All around us, life is dying, and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree. The roots are silently at work in the darkness of the earth, against a time when there shall be new leaves, fresh blossoms, green fruit. Such is the growing edge. It is the extra breath from the exhausted lung, the one more thing to try when all else has failed. The upward reach of life when weariness closes in upon all endeavor. This is the basis for hope in moments of despair, the incentive to carry on when times are out of joint and men have lost their reason the source of confidence. When worlds clash and dreams whiten into ash, the birth of a child, life's most dramatic answer to death. This is the growing edge incarnate. Look well to the growing edge. I invite you to settle into your space. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Relax your shoulders. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. And if you so choose, close your eyes. Center yourself with your breath as I read this adapted litany of thanksgiving from Howard Thurman. As I read, note the things you are grateful for in your life. Today I make my sacrament of thanksgiving. I begin with the simple things of my days. Fresh air to breathe, cool water to drink, the taste of food, the protection of houses and clothes, the comforts of home. For these I make an act of thanksgiving this day. I bring to mind the warmth of humankind that I have known the wonderful stories brought to me from the lives of many who talked of days gone by when fairies and giants and all kinds of magic held sway. The tears I have shed, the tears I have seen, the excitement of laughter and the twinkle in the eye with its reminder that life is good. For all these, I make an act of thanksgiving this day. I finger one by one the messages of hope that awaited me at the crossroads. The smile of approval from those who held in their hands the reins of my security. The tightening grip of a single handshake when I feared the step before me in the darkness. The whisper in my heart when the temptation was the fiercest and the claims of appetite were not to be denied. 
The crucial word said the simple sentence from an open page when my decision hung in the balance. For all these, I make an act of thanksgiving this day. I pass before us the mainsprings of my heritage, the fruits of the labors of countless generations who live before me, without whom my own life would have no meaning. The seers who saw visions and dreamed dreams, the prophets who sensed truth greater than the mind could grasp and whose words could only find fulfillment in the years which they would never see. The workers whose sweat has watered the trees, the leaves of which are for the healing of the nations. For all these, I make an act of thanksgiving this day. I linger over the meaning of my own life and the commitment to which I give the loyalty of my heart and mind. The little purposes in which I have shared with my loves, my desires, my gifts. The restlessness which bottoms all I do with its stark insistence that I have never done my best. I have never dared reach for the highest. The big hope that never quite deserts me. That I and my kind will study war no more. That love and tenderness with all the inner graces of almighty infection will cover the life of the children of God as the waters cover the sea. All these and more than the mind can think and the heart can feel, I make as my sacrament of thanksgiving in humbleness of mind and simplicity of heart. I invite you into a time of reflection for those things you would lift up in gratitude. Amen. Thank you for your presence. Hey, you guys, Leah here. So I must be among millions, if not billions of people who tuned in to the inauguration yesterday on January 20th, 2021. And I was inspired by every moment of it, but especially wrapped and lifted, exalted, just completely fixated and moved by Amanda Gorman's poem, her presence, her beauty, her artistry. And so this song was born. There is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light When we are ready to be it To see the light, to be the light To raise our eyes in the dark of night To climb this hill Together we will Share is always your light, light In the dark when we are ready to see it Share is always your light, light In the dark when we are ready to be it to see the light, to be the light, heart, to raise our eyes now, in the dark of night, and be a gift. Together we will. There is always light. There is always light. light. There is always light. light. We are ready to see it. There is always light. There is always light. light. There is always in the light. Dark. We are ready to be it. To see the light. Let to be the light. To raise our eyes in the dark of night. And be a kindness to we will. We will. There is always a There is always a
I recently picked up a book called Anchor in the Current, which is a collection of essays by people who have been anchored by the teachings of Howard Thurman. I learned he was an inspiration to educators, activists, theologians, and so many more. We have used his words in worship many times. I especially love the quote Oprah referenced in the earlier video. Deb Miller shared his writing, The Work of Christmas at our Christmas Eve service, which reminded us the real work of Christmas, healing the world, begins after all the celebration of the season. I was particularly drawn to Thurman's ethical demands of oneness. He states in his essay, Religion in the Time of Crisis, the following explanation for this concept. We must proclaim the truth that all life is one and that we are all, all of us, tied together. Therefore, it is mandatory that we work for a society in which the least person can find refuge and refreshment. We must lay our lives on the altar of social change so that wherever we are, the kingdom of God is at hand. We know the kingdom of God as beloved community or that ideal community we are always striving to create through our principles and covenant. Thurman's idea of oneness was rooted in his mystic spirituality. However, he expanded beyond the general understanding of mysticism to connect with community. Oftentimes, we consider mystics to be focused on an individualistic encounter with the divine, and that experience is encapsulated between the individual and divine, and most importantly, inwardly focused. With Thurman, he offered this definition of mysticism. The response of the individual to a personal encounter with God within his or her own soul. And he adds, such a response is total, affecting the inner quality of life and its outward expression and manifestation. Therefore, Thurman is encouraging us to be inspired by our connection with the divine, nature, God, mystery, awe, to shape our actions in the world. He states, even in the moment of vision, there is a sense of community, a unity not only with God, but a unity with all life. Thurman's understanding of oneness pairs well with our principle and lifts up those ideals we strive to work towards. His oneness, just like our first principle about inherent worth and dignity of each person, includes all and leaves no room for us or them type thinking. In her essay, Mysticism and Social Action, Liza Ranco expands on her understanding of how Howard Thurman defined this oneness and the ethical demands it carries. She says, If all life is one, we cannot abuse or drop bombs on some other people. There is no other. We cannot exploit or commodify the earth if the earth is the body of the divine, part of the oneness. There is no race or class or nation, no river or blade of grass that is not part of this sacred, all-embracing wholeness and ultimately, therefore, part of whatever I may understand to be myself. Within this paradigm, any act of violence, hostility, oppression, or exploitation is perpetuated against God, against the divine, against the whole. And any act of loving kindness or service is likewise a benefit to the whole. She expands on this a little bit further and continues with this idea. In my classes on mysticism and social change, I describe this view of oneness as north on the ethical compass of the mystic ethos. It is something to guide us, to point ourselves toward, to check ourselves against as we work for justice, healing, and liberation. It is the ideal that compels us, although we may never attain it, expanding the radius of our concern and depth of our responsibility. Thurman invites us to consider the work towards oneness is important to all of us and allows us to work towards the world where everyone can live from a place of aliveness. Everyone can have a sense of freedom and fulfillment. He reminds us that as long as there is social and ec economic injustice, then the pathway to our individual altars are blocked, whether we are the oppressed 
or the oppressor. In order to do this work towards oneness, Thurman encouraged people to practice transformational self-care or soul care. These are the practices that help us establish, maintain, and grow our inner connections, that help us build that inner authenticity, integrity, and authority. It is different from the individual self-care practices we often talk about, like a massage, a glass of wine, or watching a movie. Instead, it is tapping into your inner truth of why you exist on this earth and cultivating the tr that truth through the practices that help you stay connected to it. For some of us, it is through nature, or meditation, or worship, or reading, or art. Ultimately, it answers the question, where do you find water for your thirsty spirit? Thurman thought it incredibly important to constantly be tending to your soul care in order to sustain the work of healing, activism, and justice seeking. One way to cultivate this connection is through gratitude, as we meditated on earlier. By anchoring ourselves in these blessings we have in our lives, we are able to realize and work towards others gaining those blessings in their lives. When counseling others, Thurman posed the following questions for people to deeply reflect on who were trying to understand what their purpose was in the world. If you want to pause the video after each question to think about your own answers, then I encourage you to do so. First, a question of identity. Who are you? Now think, who are you really? Second, a question of values and purpose. What do you want? Or what are you for? Third, a question of discernment of means. How will you get it? Or how will you work towards it? Lisa Rankow suggests by asking these questions, Thurman encourages us to think about the meaning of our life and how it will endure beyond our lives. She says, this meaning is expressed in the enduring commitments that guide our every step, daring to live more fully, love more deeply, risk more boldly in service to whatever has claimed us and to give all that we are as a consecrated instrument of healing and justice. Thurman continuously in his work, writing, and ministry encouraged people to live from a place of groundedness in self, in community, and with the divine. He believed that it is the task for all of us to heal and restore our world. This includes the fractured and the broken. I end with these closing words from Howard Thurman. My testimony is that life is against all dualism. Life is one. Therefore, a way of life that is worth living must be a way worthy of life itself. Nothing less than that can abide. Always, against all the fragments and shatters, against all that separate and divide within and without, life labors to meld together into a single harmony. In all things, there is a secret door which leads into a central place where the creator of life and the God of the human heart are one and the same. I take my stand for the future and for the generations that follow over the bridges we have already crossed. It is here that the meaning of the hunger of the heart is unified. The head and the heart at last inseparable. They are lost in the wonder of the one. May we be inspired to find and understand our inner truth, allow it to to connect us to that which is greater and compel us to heal the world. Amen. Our prayer can be found in our hymnal number 498, written by Howard Thurman. 
in the quietness of this place, surrounded by the all-pervading presence of the holy, my heart whispers. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve that in good times or in tempest, I may not forget that to which my life is committed. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. May it be so. Amen. Please raise your spirit and voice for our closing hymn, Circle Round for Freedom. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, For the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for Our benediction is from Howard Thurman. It is easy for me to take things for granted and to deal with them without sensitiveness. When have you noticed the color in the sky? When have you looked at the shape and place of a tree? What about the light in the eyes of your friend as she smiles? There's magic all around us, in the rocks and trees and in the minds of the humans. Deep hidden springs of magic. May we tap into those springs and be inspired. Love be with you. Please join in our collective chalice extinguishing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Please raise your hands 
in the spirit of connection for our closing song. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Revealed until it's seen.